In this video, I want to explain how we can represent the conditions of homoscedasticity and no serial correlation or no autocorrelation in matrix form. So in non-matrix form, we had a model which was yi was equal to, let's say, alpha plus beta xi plus some error ui. And we were able to write the condition for homoscedastic errors such that the variance of an individual error ui, given the uh, list of independent variables xi, had to be equal to a constant sigma squared. And in order to have no autocorrelation, we required that the covariance of an error ui with another error uj, given the independent variables xi and xj, that had to be equal to zero. So that's just saying that there's no covariance between the two errors. And I should also write that this only has to hold when i does not equal to j, because obviously when i equals j, there is going to be some covariance and it's going to be given by sigma squared. So in this video, I want to explain how we can represent these two conditions here, but in the matrix formulation of econometrics. So in matrix form, we can rewrite this above equation here in the form which we've become accustomed to, which is just that y, where net y with the sort of line underneath it now, represents a vector of our dependent variable, is equal to x times beta, where x holds all of our independent variables, and beta is just a vector of the parameters on model, plus a vector of our errors, which I'm calling u bar, or, or u with the line underneath it rather. Okay, so how can we go ahead and represent these two conditions in this particular formulation of econometrics? Well, first of all, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come up with an expression for the variance of our error term. So that's the variance of u, given that we have all of our independent variables x. So we've already explained how we can actually evaluate the variance of a random vector it is actually equal to the expectation of u minus the expectation of u all times u minus the expectation of u all primed, in other words, all transposed. But here we sort of state that the expectation of u given x is equal to zero. That's one of the Gauss-Markov conditions, right? So that means that we can actually do away with these two particular expectations terms in our variance expression. And I should actually have within this variance expression a sort of given x there, but I'm sort of going to neglect writing it just because it gets a little bit messy from now on. Okay, so then that means that we can rewrite our variance as being equal to the expectation of u times u primed and then given that we have our independent variables x. And we can actually write out this in long form if we just use the definitions of u and u primed. So this is the same as the expectation of, well, u is just u1, u2, all the way through to un times u primed, which is just going to be the row vector, which is just going to be u1, u2, all the way through to un. And then if we multiply this entire expression out, what we're going to get is, if we sort of go through it in turn, the first term is just going to be u1 times u1. So the first term in our matrix now is going to be, or I should have an expectation on the outside, it's just going to be u1 squared. The second term is going to be u1 times u2. So that's just going to be u1 times u2. And then if we go all the way along, our last term in our first row is just going to be u1 times un. Okay, so that's our first row. Now if we move down to the second row, the first term is just going to be u2 times u1. So that's just going to be u2 times u1. The second term is going to be u2 squared. And then if we continue all the way to the right, we're just going to have u2 times un. And we could do this for every single row in our matrix. And if we then go to the last row, we're going to see that the diagonal element is just going to be u n squared. So I hope you can see here that essentially our diagonal components are just the squares of the particular errors, whereas the off-diagonal elements are the product of two different errors. 
And that's going to play a crucial role in the next video when I actually go ahead and explain how these two particular expressions here in the non-matrix form can actually be shown or can be represented rather in the matrix formulation of the conversion.